Taking Thales' advice, Pythagoras traveled to Egypt, learning ancient Egyptian and spending 22 years as a neophyte and initiate in the great temples at Heliopolis, Memphis, and Thebes, the main centers of learning, where he was initiated into the secrets of mathematics, geometry, astronomy, and astrology. He was also initiated into the knowledge of correspondences and symbolism, as well as the rituals of those institutions which were designed to expand the consciousness. In Egypt, Pythagoras was captured and taken to Babylon by the soldiers of Cambyses II, the king of Persia. Once in Babylon, he was mysteriously freed, and this gave him the opportunity to learn the secrets of the Magi, which in turn opened the gates of Chaldean science to him. From there, he traveled to Asia Minor, where the mysteries of various temples were revealed to him. It is said that he traveled to Sidon in Phoenicia, as well as Mesopotamia, and even as far as India, where he learned the secret Vedic teachings and about the doctrine of reincarnation, which he came to believe firmly. In this way, he learned that there are many paths, but only one leads to the truth. Finally, he possessed the key to knowledge. After a lifetime of travels to sacred sites, he then decided to return to Samus, intending to continue what he now considered as his mission. Samus, however, was ruled by the autocrat Polycrates, 530 through 538 BCE, an ally of the Persians who had brutally suppressed the people's rights. Pythagoras was not able to stomach the tyranny and, unable to find students to instruct, went to consult the Pythian Oracle of Delphi. He left under the protection of Apollo and, in accordance with the response of the Pythia, about 530 BCE, he landed in Crotona, in Magna Graecia. Magna Graecia, or Greater Greece in Latin, was the name the Romans gave to the Greek settlements along the coast of southern Italy and Sicily because of the large number of Greeks living there. These cities left a lasting imprint of Greek culture that influenced the Etruscan and later the Roman civilizations. According to Strabo, Heraclides Ponticus, Antiochus of Syracuse, the sophist Zenobius, and Diodorus Siculus, the Greek colony of Cretona was six miles from the Licinian promontory, the current Capo Colonna. Like Samus, it had a temple of Hera, it lies in the modern Italian province of Crotone, in the region of Calabria. This was the ancient territory of the Iapages, an Illyrian-speaking tribe whose language is tentatively distantly related to Albanian. Crotona was a large city founded in 708 BCE after the Delphic Oracle instructed some Achaean colonists, led by Miskelos, to settle there. The story is told that the founders of Crotona and Sybaris both consulted the Oracle at Delphi at the same time and were given the choice of wealth or health. Archias, the founder of Sybaris, chose wealth, while Miskalos chose health. Cretona had a small harbor, but it was only a port of call and not a center of commerce. Behind the city were the Sila Mountains, cutting it off from the interior. The slopes and foothills were extensive and fertile, 
the city was famous for its doctors and athletes. The school of philosophy that Pythagoras founded there played an important role in the political affairs of southern Italy for the next two or three generations. About the time Pythagoras arrived, Crotona was defeated by the city of Locri at the river Sagris. But its fortunes changed and, in 510 BCE, Crotona defeated and destroyed its rich and luxurious neighbor to the north, Sybaris. From then until about 450 BCE, Crotona seems to have been the dominant city in the region. And historians credited Pythagoras and his moral training for the military revival of Crotona. After his arrival, Pythagoras introduced himself to the people of the city by delivering several discourses containing some basic concepts of his philosophy. His presence was that of a free man, tall and graceful in speech and gesture. He made a great impression on the Cretonians and showed himself to be not merely a moral reformer, but a mystical philosopher whose insights into human relations could bring about a society harmonious in itself and with the gods. With Pythagoras and his community directing affairs, Crotona became the most important power in southern Italy. It enjoyed brilliant athletic successes at the Olympic Games and boasted a flourishing medical school. At this period, the Greek cities of southern Italy were renowned as leaders of Greek thought and culture. In material culture, they rivaled other Greek cities, such as Athens and Corinth. This was no provincial backwater, but a fully developed part of ancient Greek world. Pythagoras especially stressed how the gods were to be propitiated with sacred ritual. Among other things, he emphasized that one should wear white in a temple. One should use wood and seawater rather than animals in sacrifice. And that one should pour libations to Zeus before eating. In order to create a harmonious society, the philosopher also defined what should be considered proper or ethical behavior between the sexes and between children and their elders. He stated that the young should respect their parents and have a love of knowledge. He believed that the universe as a whole was a living creature, being a single, living, eternal, and divine entity. He taught that human beings were mortal, but that the soul was not. It was a fragment or spark of the divine soul cut off and imprisoned in a mortal body. A person's aim in life, he said, was to become pure spirit and thus rejoin the universal spirit to which he or she essentially belonged. Until the soul could purify itself completely, it must undergo a series of transmigrations, exchanging one body for another. Interestingly, these were also the views of the Cathars of southern France some 1,500 years later. His religion was a kind of pantheism. He was also the first to coin the term cosmos, a word that combines the notions of order, fitness, and beauty, an ordered whole. Each one of us is a cosmos in miniature. The philosopher who studies the cosmos becomes cosmios, orderly in his or her own soul. The people